Hi guys, Ivan here from the Bovenkamer for all your 80s and 90s fun. And today we talk about the CBM model 8050 dual floppy drive. That sounds boring. So in my previous video I asked you guys about uh, continuing my channel in Dutch or in English. I got uh, quite some response on that. A few Dutch viewers uh, prefer me to continue in Dutch of course because it's my native language. Uh, but uh, when I see this, the YouTube statistics uh, it becomes pretty much a no-brainer because uh, I got uh, three, four times more viewers, followers and likes. So yeah, it's just the way it is. Uh, English is the language on YouTube. So for now, I will continue in English. So I hope you don't mind too much and uh, stay tuned. I also asked you guys about the name of my channel, The Bovenkamer, because I was looking for a good translation in English. I got a few nice tips, but also I was surprised because some guys told me not to change the name. Uh, it's, it's good what it is, The Bovenkamer. I explained it in my previous video and at the end of the day, it's just the name of a YouTube channel. So why change it? Uh, it's not such a big deal. So for now, I'll keep the name what it is. Welcome to the Bovenkamer. So the good thing of these videos is that I can also learn from you guys, of course. Uh, so someone told me that uh, in this combination with this uh, very first type of cassette player, it, sh it should come with the blue bezel. Uh, I got one with a black bezel, so it's it's uncommon, but uh, I'm pretty sure they existed in the time, because uh, maybe someone told me that uh, probably the black bezel was sold separately to some kind of upgrade, or maybe uh, uh, when they were producing uh, this type with black bezels, uh, the end of stock of the old cassette players were still installed in the machine. So. It's no big deal to me. Uh, I know it's it's an original combination, and uh, I've seen it before on the the channel of uh, the eight bit guy. You can spot one of these two, so that's a good thing to know. Thanks for the information, guys. So when I picked up this piece, it was in a pretty bad shape. I think it was stored for decades in a dirty and moist environment. Uh, you can still see the rust on the outer case. So uh, I'm not going to repaint it because it's 40 years old. It looks like it's 40 years old, so it's no problem to me. Uh, it shouldn't look new. Um, it's the original color, the original paint, and why not? It's the original rust, so let's keep it. So at first when I got it and I powered it up, it didn't do anything. So the first thing to check uh, is the fuse, of course. And guess what? The fuse was blown. So I replaced it with a new one and after that I was really flabbergasted because uh, when I powered it up it did the right thing. You see the LEDs flickering a bit and the center LED stays green in the end. So that means that the self-test was successful. So then it was time to open the hood and as you can see the motherboard uh, is in pretty good shape. It says uh, assembly 8050 made in 1980 by Commodore, of course, in USA. And when you look into the case, you see the two disk drives sharing one controller, the power supply and the close-up shows how filthy and dirty it was. Also, when you look at the pins of the ICs, they are pretty corroded. So it's uh, pretty strange that it uh, booted up so nicely. This thing I found in the case, it was uh, lost. It's a thing to calibrate the rotation speed of your disk drive. As you can see here, it is missing, so I reattached it with some glue. Uh, the heads had to be cleaned, of course. Uh, they were pretty dirty. And also one of the front panels uh, was broken off. I tried to fix it with uh, super glue, but uh, it was not a success. So then I came across the next problem. As you can see, it's a strange floppy drive mechanism. 
uh, you have to put a floppy in and when uh, you have to push down the lever to lock it to lock the disc in place but that wasn't working it was also always uh, coming up again so after some research i found this little piece uh, like a piston when you push down the outer ring the inner thing should uh, rotate so it can lock behind some plastic piece uh, but it just needed some greasing after all it was not a difficult repair so now uh, the disc locks in place so I can use the drive now so then it's time to connect uh, the disk drive with the pet computer with the special IEEE cable which is uh, pretty hard to find I got one here so let's try it out that's the connection port on the disk drive and then we attach the other side with the Commodore logo up to the IEEE port of the pet computer. So things were not uh, operational at that moment because uh, the stepper motor which is needed to move the drive head forth and back was still uh, blocked inside so I had to use a lot of WD-40 and spin, uh, spin the motor uh, by hand to move the drive head back and forth and grease the axis. So after I did this on both drives, uh, things started working better. So then I tried to insert uh, floppy in drive uh, 1 and use the header command of Commodore Basic 4 in an attempt to format that disk. Uh, it was not very successful because uh, it, it was trying to start the format but uh, it kept spinning and spinning without moving the head so that didn't turn out so good. So let's try the same thing in drive zero. We enter a floppy disk and use the same header command in an attempt to format that disk. Uh, the first attempt in drive 0 was not successful because of a bad disk. I have no idea if it was really a bad disk or maybe the drive failed. So I just tried again uh, on that same floppy disk in that same drive. And guess what? Things started to move better now. You see the stepper motor uh, is doing its work now and the head is really moving forward. So after a while uh, the disk was ready and uh, I could even list a directory of it. So now I think it's a good time to explain a bit more about how uh, disk drives were used in those days. Because actually this computer has an operating system, BASIC, but it does not have a disk operating system. This thing does not know how to handle floppy disks. It has no clue. So that's why this is such a large machine with a lot of stuff installed. What you see here is actually a motherboard of another computer. So I have two computers here. One for your operational programs and this one is, is only handling uh, disk operating system stuff. So it is a motherboard uh, with uh, two CPUs installed, also the MOS uh, 6502, like the PET, so theoretically it has twice the processing power as the PET, but of course it's for another purpose. One of the processors is used to do the interfacing between computer and disk drive, and the other uh, processor is used for the controlling uh, the disk drives it's themselves. So, there is 4K of memory, 4 kilobytes of memory on this motherboard which is shared between those two processors and is of course used as a, for instance, as a buffer for data that has to be transferred uh, back and forth to the computer. So about uh, floppies it can use, uh, it's of course the five and a, and a quarter inch type uh, single density and uh, we saw in the hardware that there is only one uh, drive head, so only the bottom side of the disk is used. Uh, actually, after being formatted, one disk can hold about uh, half a megabyte of data. So you saw when we did a directory listing on the pads that it is reporting 
the amount of free blocks and not the, the amount of free bytes or kilobytes. So what's a block? Uh, imagine uh, formatting a disk is actually drawing circles on it, concentric circles, smaller and larger circles. And then uh, if this was a, the disk inside is round, if that was a pie, you cut it in pieces and uh, every piece creates arcs, uh, concentric arcs. So one, one arc, in one arc you can store a certain amount of bytes and that's actually a block. So now I have a working drive unit connected to a pet computer. I managed to format some disks, but of course they are empty and I have no other floppies with software on it. So I would like to copy software from uh, tape to floppy. As you can see in my previous video, I have lots of tapes with uh, nice games and stuff on it. So it would be more convenient to have those files on uh, floppy because they load a lot faster. So how do we do that? I uh, insert a floppy here. There is already some stuff on it. And in the manual of the disk drive, I found this page, uh, instructions to, for moving a tape program to disk. So I just follow the instructions and I first load from the tape, so we press play. I chose one with a very small program on it, Mandala is something graphical, uh, so it will load pretty fast and we won't have to waste too much time. There it is, it's already found. And it's ready. So now that it's loaded into the memory, uh, we can save that program to disk. And therefore we use the following command. So it is saved on the floppy disk now. And what we now can do is ver verify if the saved file is the same as the bits and bytes that are still in memory. To do a comparison between those two and be sure that the uh, uh, saved file is correct with this command. So it's verifying, it says OK and ready. So we can continue now to list a directory of the floppy. And we can see that indeed Mandala is saved. It needed two blocks and when we run it, it looks like this. So the next time we boot our computer, I will do a reset. I know the thing is uh, on floppy and it's a lot easier to load. We just say drive one and it searches for the program on floppy and it's already loaded and we can run it immediately. So I bet you guys remember in my previous video that I was loading uh, a musical program from tape, uh, Kan Kan. Um, and it took almost two minutes to load. So I saved it to a floppy and I will show you now how fast it loads from floppy disk. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Five seconds and we are running. So that's a lot better than waiting for a tape. So I hope you all enjoyed my story about this CBM 8050 dual floppy drive for Commodore PET systems. If you liked my video, please follow my channel to be notified of future videos. And for now, have a nice day and see you next time in the Bovenkamer.